Good morning. Good morning. This is a lot less nerve-wracking when I knew everyone, but I, um, I gave this talk a couple of years ago and it was pretty well received, so I'm hoping that even though none of you know me, you'll give me a chance to tell you a little bit about myself. When I was seven years old, my brother John was born. Soon after, my parents explained to my younger sister and I that he had Down syndrome. We didn't really know what that meant, but, we explained, but they explained that he would be able to do most things that other brothers could do, but it may take him a little longer. My experience early on was that this was true. It took him longer to walk and talk, he needed special therapies to gain skills that other children did on their own, and he spent a lot of time in the hospital. But he was the only brother I knew. He may have been different, but I loved him regardless and I assume the rest of the world would as well. I realized this may not be the case when I was sitting in Mr. Harrington's seventh grade English class talking to the kid next to me. He explained that he just got a new guitar and was taking lessons to learn how to play it. I excitedly explained that my brother also had a guitar and he liked to play it as well. To my horror, my classmate replied, I don't know why your parents would waste their money on a guitar for him, he's retarded. He'll never be able to play it. I felt like I had been punched in the gut. My eyes filled with tears. Why would he say that? Didn't he see what I saw? Didn't he realize how hard my brother worked to keep up and how he would never be mean or judgmental to anyone? After that, the world felt like a darker place. I felt like maybe my brother wasn't someone to be proud of. Maybe I should be ashamed. Maybe I shouldn't tell people. Maybe I shouldn't teach people. I thought the, kids may, the other kids might make fun of me. I thought they may think I was weird for having a brother with a disability. I felt like this for a while. But as I continued through school, and I heard more and more kids call each other retarded and use it as a joke, I just couldn't keep quiet. But when I finally got the guts to speak up, I kept getting the same response. I didn't mean it that way. I wouldn't call someone with an actual disability that word. Stop being so sensitive. So I started to ask myself, is there an okay way to use it? Can you really not mean it that way? I started to do some research. One of the first sites that popped up when I Googled the word retarded was Urban Dictionary. While usually good for a laugh, one of, my, one of the top definitions of that word stated that it was an unofficial slang descriptor for a person, thing, action, or object, which was one or more of the following. A waste of time, brainless, disgraceful, garbage, good for nothing, gross, gutless, hopeless, humiliating, insignificant, lacking courage, laughable, loser, pointless, shameful, unimportant, worthless. I don't know about you guys, but I don't really want any of my friends calling me a word that's considered a synonym for all of those words. I think what it comes down to is kindness and respect. The good news is, my experience with Salisbury is that the boys here are especially kind. They go out of their way to help each other, support each other, and include each other. Whether it's making sure no boy is sitting alone in the dining hall, holding a door for someone, or the boy who anonymously cleaned all the snow off my car every time it snowed, I saw kind acts happen on a regular basis here at Salisbury. These small acts of kindness are what make the world a better place. But I encourage all of you to not only think about your actions, but also your words. It sounds so cliche to say that words can be hurtful, but they honestly can be. Certain words pack more of a punch than others. For me, it's the R word. For others, it may be racial or homophobic words, or maybe referencing suicide or mental illness in a joking matter. There's a quote that says, be kind, for everyone, is meeting, is, everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. And I think the more I learn about the world, the more I believe that's true. We all have battles and struggles, and while some of us share them, many people do not. 
So I ask you to be kind to each other. Think about the words you say. And I also encourage you to think about speaking up when someone else says something that may be hurtful. I realize this can be difficult. It's even hard for me to get the guts to say to a stranger or someone in a position of power, hey, maybe you could pick a different word to use. But I think when educating others, it's important to be careful in how we approach it and when. I don't like calling someone out in front of a group or embarrassing them. That won't help anyone. I suggest speaking to the person one-on-one -on -one in a non-threatening way. I do my best to educate others about the use of the R word, but I'll admit it's an uphill battle. But my hope is that if a bunch of individuals do a little every day, the world will slowly become a more welcoming place for people with intellectual disabilities. Um, so I'm going to show a video to break up my speech so it's um, not as dry. Um, and so there's a campaign that was created by some acquaintances of mine a couple of years ago that's called Spread the Word to End the Word um, that aims to end the use of the word, the R word, in our everyday language. So this is going to be a video of Johnny Knoxville um, and his friend with Down Syndrome that was um, filmed after they made the movie The Ringer. It's just basic. This isn't going to work. That's it. When the going gets tough, give up. That's what you're good at. You've got a chance to change your whole life, Steve. Become a man. Become a winner. Now show some backbone. Get down deep and go kick that Todd's ass. Don't ever say that word to me again. I mean it. These guys are my friends. I don't use that word anymore. Uh, the R word. Not because I'm politically correct. I got far from politically correct. I don't say it because it hurts my friend Eddie. And, and honestly, I just I don't think most people like I think most people don't say it to to be mean or insensitive. But they they just never thought about it that it is being mean or insensitive. And uh, you know, hopefully this will make people think about it. Oh my stars for the love of lies. You spread my CD! And I think that they shouldn't use that word because it hurts people. Why, why, why would you want to hurt people? Working on that film completely changed the way I thought about people uh, with a mental disability. And they're, I mean, Eddie's my best friend now, you know? So you're working on the computer there? No, I'm walking my dog. You don't, don't, don't pity them, don't talk down to them. You know, be open to them. It's just be open to them, be open to people. Uh, it, it, it changed my life. I, I think it, it could, it changed yours. Right, talk to them, be their friend. Love them, hug them. Do, any, do anything to, to raise the spirits of people with different ability, like, it's like, it's like God taking something away from them in one area and making them extraordinary in other areas. That's perfectly put, Eddie. Break down the walls. Break down the stereotypes. Break down every wall you can. I break them. I broke that obstacle. The obstacle will never get in my way. And, 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 and if anybody puts me down and makes fun of me, you know what? They're not my friend. I have this friend. That's all I, that's all I have. And if anyone makes fun of you, you're going to verbally assault them until they feel about this big. <laughs> no, I would not. I would put soap in their mouth and wash their mouth. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not in their mouth anymore. So, to get back to my brother, a small act of kindness by one of his classmates has set into motion a series of events that changed his life. When John was in eighth grade, he decided to join the track team at his middle school. A boy on the team offered to be John's track buddy so that my mom didn't have to attend every practice to make sure he was okay. He developed a bond with that buddy and a true strong friendship. It was through his track buddy that John was introduced to football. 
His track buddy went on to play high school football for a local private school, and his senior year was selected to play in the Under Armour All-American game. John was along for the whole ride. He got involved with his, brother's, his buddy's high school team and attended the All-American game with him. Last weekend, John celebrated his fifth year helping out with the Under Armour game, standing alongside Steve Mariucci and Deion Sanders. At the end of their week together, Dion tweeted out a picture of him and John stating, this is the happiest kid in the world. His smile is infectious and his spirit is incredible. He is a blessing to all who have met him. He spent the last two birthdays in Nashville hanging with Marcus Mariota, who he befriended a few years ago at an awards banquet. He spent Christmas morning texting Marcus pictures of his new Titans gear and making sure he was feeling okay after his ankle injury. John's an assistant coach at a private school in our hometown outside Philadelphia that has won the state championship in their division four out of the last six years. I could go on bragging about all of his accomplishments, but what's really amazing about them is that they all started with a simple act of kindness. If that boy never went out of their way to offer to be John's track buddy in middle school and become his friend, none of those things may have happened. And while sure, not all acts of kindness turned it into extreme examples, we can all make some sort of a difference. It starts with our words and our actions on a daily basis. Saying the word retarded doesn't make you a bad person. Saying, not saying, not standing up to others who may use hurtful language doesn't make you a bad person either. I totally get it that you guys might not mean it that way. But I want you to ask yourself if you do choose to use a potentially hurtful word, what way do you mean it? Just reflect on that word or other, what others mean to you. Think about what they may mean to other people. The world isn't always a kind place, but there are so many kind people in it. You boys are a part of that. I'd like to end by showing a video of my brother that was uh, featured on a local news station. George Archbishop Wood, as we said, during the bye until next week. And on tonight's most valuable player segment, we head out to Warminster to introduce you to the heart and soul of the Wood football team, even though this team has never played a minute of high school football. In high school football, the team captain is a natural board leader, someone that energizes the players and inspires them to do their best and to be their best on and off the field. For the Archbishop Wood football team, John Shobie is that leader. Shobie, who was born with Down syndrome, has been their honorary captain for the last five years. I, I've got the honor team. He's such a great kid. He's very dramatic. He can't help fall up. Football the game, and there's a lot of bigger things out there. And uh, I think he's taught a lot of us, including myself, a lot more about life than, than uh, we taught him. I look at John, he's part of our family. The 20-year-old has been a warm and engaging fixture on the field that the players appreciate. Ever since a former Wood football player asked the coach if Shelby could join the team. This is exciting to see everybody every time he comes out here. And everybody's excited to see him. Spoke around, drill, drill, motivates everybody. I don't think we'd be as, as, um, as, as happy, as energetic when we come out to practice. Because, I mean, he really puts us in a good mood. He gives us a, uh, a good vibe. And his parents are thrilled he's a part of the team. Out here, he's just one of the guys. Coach is so patient with him and so um, accepting of him and has no problem with him being right in there with the team. He's up in an environment where he's loved and they're, they're taking care of him. It teaches the kids about tolerance and acceptance and accepting somebody who's a little bit different. Shelby doesn't just show up on game days. He's at most practices helping out, even running a few drills. My Viking, Red Viking. He's all over the place, whatever he wants to do. Usually you see he's, uh, he starts out with the kickers, and then he moves on, and he's uh, what we do our defensive back stuff. And he's so hands-on, in fact, last year, he became an official part of the coaching staff. Uh, what's the definite idea? I'm sorry, too. I'll take some coach. So now he's here with a whistle and uh, uh, running around a little more demanding. Shelby's personality inspires everyone around him, and his message to the team is simple. I think that's my best. Never, never give up. Just play the arts. He's brought a positive.
positive energy, I think. Like part of everybody's family. And the kids love him and he loves the kids and it's the same kind of thing too. It is an easy thing to see. Shelby says his dream is to be a coach in the NFL. Great story. All right. Thank you guys so much.